Hello, this is Brian. Today, October 17th, 2019. It's a Thursday here in Southern California, and this is another episode of Spotlight on Trees, where I focus on generally California native shrubs and trees. Today's episode focuses on a very common shrub here in Southern California at lower elevations from about Santa Barbara County, coastal Santa Barbara County, down towards Baja, California. It's called Laurel Sumac, Malosma Lorena. So this shrub right here, it's in the cashew family, the Anacardiaceae. It's anywhere from a medium-sized shrub to a very large shrub, sometimes even small tree size on occasion, and I've seen those from time to time. And uh, the thing about the laurel sumac, it's very common. It's a very common shrub. It can handle these dry south-facing slopes. I'm in between La Habra Heights and Roland Heights, Hacienda Heights, southern LA County. I'm in the Puente Chino Hills, the Whittier Puente Chino Hills. So transverse range that runs from roughly the Whittier area to Chino Hills State Park. And I'm in uh, Powder Canyon, right near Peter F. Skabarum Regional Park. Now Laurel Sumac is typified by having roughly ovate shaped leaves, a little bit narrower towards the front. The leaves are similarly shaped to mangoes, a relative. They're in the cashew family on Cardiaceae, so they are related to mangoes, cashews, pistachios, poison ivy, poison sumac, poison oak, and other types of sumacs in the genus Rus. Now, Malosma lorina used to be known as Rus lorina until recent taxonomic uh, studies, I guess, uh, showed a little bit of a different kinship, so they put it in the genus Malosma. And it's very common here in Southern California. It's found anywhere in dry coastal sage scrub like here, south facing slopes, and sometimes in chaparral, on, even on north facing slopes in oak woodland. Sometimes you'll, you'll see it underneath coast live oaks in lower elevation foothill canyons. So it can grow anywhere from extremely dry coastal sage scrub, nearly desert conditions, to woodland conditions. Now, Laurel Sumac leaves fold upwards in the midrib. As you can see here, a lot of these leaves fold it up like a taco. A lot of people call this taco tree or taco bush. Yeah, the new growth comes out kind of a reddish, so it's kind of attractive. It's kind of like kind of like mango. The leaves kind of have a reddish tinge when they first appear. Uh, it's a fully evergreen shrub. The flowers are whitish and in small conical shaped panicles. You can see these old dry droops here, these little fruits. They're in, come in these cone shaped panicles and they usually appear usually anywhere from late May through the summer months and they're very small and whitish and then they turn into these little greenish droops that have little hints of reddish on them when they're ripening and then they end up drying off towards fall and winter and end up forming these old dry woody little masses. Now it is a relative of cashews and mangoes and poison oak so some people may have an allergic reaction upon after touching the sap of this plant. I've been lucky I grew up around this shrub a lot as a kid so I haven't had any issues with it but some people with sensitive skin might get a rash. I don't know what the incidence rate is of it but personally I grew up around it and I was fine. I've always admired the beauty of this shrub because it's so tough. It can handle really hot temperatures. It can handle months and months and months and months of bone dry conditions as this one's enduring here on a sun blasted south facing slope here. And it always looks 
luscious. I've seen these after the droughts of 2013, 2014, 2015, and they almost always look the same. They just look so lush. And you can see, like I said, you can see the relationship to the mangoes. The leaves are almost mango shaped, only a little wider and much smaller. But uh, they are common in, on the coast to the coastal foothills of the coast ranges and uh, don't range extremely far inland. Maybe as about as far inland as the, the slopes of the San Bernardino Mountains, the San Gabriel Mountains, uh, the San Inez Mountains in uh, Santa Barbara County. And, uh, but I have seen them as high as 4,000 feet uh, in the Santa Ana Mountains. One, uh, one day I was hiking in the Santa Anas and I s there's one little, we'll assume I get about 4,000 feet. But I'll come back to that in a minute because I have an interesting story to tell about that. Laurel sumac, one thing is laurel sumac, especially the foliage, is very sensitive to cold. So once the temperatures drop to around freezing, their ti their, uh, the water in their tissues freezes a lot more easily than in a lot of other plants. So the plants will look like they've died and turn all brown. And I've seen that before, too, where the foliage turns brown and it dies back quite a bit. Now, that's why they, a lot of people use laurel sumac as an area to indicate where to grow citrus crops. If laurel sumac grows there, citrus will probably be okay. So laurel sumac was used by settlers to indicate where the best growing conditions for their cold sensitive fruit crops. Avocados and, and oranges, lemons, and everything like that. Then again, we do get freak cold snaps. That's, you know, that happens. That can happen anywhere. And when it does happen, you'll think, oh my god, all the laurel sumacs are dying. Well, the top tissues, yes, they're dying. They're drying out. They're frostbitten, and they turn brown and die back to the lower limbs or even all the way to the root. However, it's springtime, the temperatures are warm enough. Laurel sumac will spring back to life and send up root shoots. And that's another adaptation for, for fire. When they get burnt or they get cut back mechanically, they have a root crown from which they can re-sprout. So laurel sumac is a very, very resilient plant. And if you ever walk by them, sometimes even several yards downwind from them, you can get that kind of a kind of an interesting pungent aroma. Some people, for some reason, liken it to apples. I don't know why. I never they never really got an apple smell from them. Myself, it's kind of like a pungent, not like not quite like sage, but along the same lines with the strong pungency. And on very warm days, the smell can be very strong. But it's never unpleasant. It's quite pleasant, actually. In fact, the name Malosma uh, basically means apple scent in Greek. So that's where the genus name Malosma came from. But so, some, some people do liken it to the smell of apples. Now, the bark on laurel sumac um, is grayish, kind of grayish, usually very smooth. And usually the shrubs form multiple stems as you can see here multiple for multiple stems and sometimes they can form some pretty dense thickets and one thing about uh, I want to go back to the taco shape of the leaves you notice the leaves are folded at the midrib well that's one of their adaptations that is how they gather more moisture at the roots what happens is dew condenses on the foliage it can roll down the back of the leaf and drip onto the soil. And when it rains, the rain collects in the dip of the leaf, rolls back, and falls onto the foliage. Or it can fall forward, too. So it can either fall either direction. It'll fall, and uh, it'll concentrate more water towards the roots. So they get more moisture out of rains and fogs. So that's another reason why laurel sumac is very well adapted, and it's leaf shape, it's morphology, and and laurel sumac get incredibly deep roots. They're very deep rooted plants. So they can 
go way down in the soil to gather moisture. And I've seen laurel sumac roots before on occasion. Here's some smaller ones here. Right here, the laurel sumac. Um, I do have a small story I want to tell about laurel sumac. It's, um, we're talking about cold hardiness. Remember, one time I was hiking in the Santa Ana Mountains in Orange County. Uh, I was just past Los Pinos Saddle along Main Divide Truck Trail. I was at an elevation of 3,900, 4,000 feet. And it had snowed the day before. So I was hiking past this laurel sumac and then I was looking back and I saw the, saw the snow on the ground thinking to myself, I'd never seen that before. Never seen laurel sumac and snow together. So uh, it's just kind of a funny story I just remembered. Now, here's one of its relatives right here. This is called lemonade sumac. And this one actually is in the genus Rus. This is Rus integrifolia. So this is a relative. And it's a true sumac. Like Rus tefina, Rus glabra, the sumacs of back east with the pinnately compound leaves and the brilliant red fall colors. This is actually a true sumac as well. And again, it's in the cashew family. But yes, I just wanted to point that out. We do have close relatives. And there's another relative that's a little more similar looking to laurel sumac, which I have not seen here. Usually it's found further inland. And it's called Russovada. Sugar sumac. And they also have the taco-like leaves, but they're broader forming the same functions. But here you have it. Anywhere you're in the coastal foothills, be sure to stop by and look at the Laurel Sumac. And uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next episode of Spotlight on Trees. And I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.